Greetings everyone, my name is Ettervel, and welcome to my let's try of the early alpha demo of Backspace Boken, a hybrid old school dungeon crawler and typing game, in development by RNG Party Games. I'll be spending at least 15 minutes on its title, giving my first impressions along the way. So without further ado, let's begin. The intro text lasted for too long, and there is no way to fast forward through it or skip past it. Anyways, to move around this world, you can use either the WASDA keys or arrow keys, and in order to interact with either objects or NPCs, walk up to them and press enter. Furigana, duly noted. So the objective of this game is to enter the tower and find some medicine for Kana's sickly sisters. If it exists, that is. And we're in, but this is the point of no return. The way back has been sealed off. And our first monster is a skeleton warrior. I defeated it so quickly it wasn't able to retaliate. Oh, never mind, that monster couldn't retaliate anyways. The next one will be able to. Well, I can't turn back anyways. The way back has been sealed off. Hopefully there's an exit out of this place. Let's take the right door first. Punctuation already? Well, this was an easy encounter. But I'm worried about the exclamation points and the dashes now. Now an actual threat. It appears that we're healed based of our best streaks. And whenever I misspell a word, Kana temporarily gets stunned. Is this a floating drumstick? A nice and easy way to get used to using contractions. How long has it been stuck in here? Probably not long enough to have starved already, unless he's eaten some of those floating drumsticks. Well, I need to explore every nook and cranny, there may be some secrets or extra treasures, and extra spaces as well. That's a hole in the ground, so I won't go there just yet. That was easy. I want to see what's behind these series of doors.
Just some extra spaces, not worth it. I wonder if in the final game we'll have extra stuff like money and equipment. Then we go into the basement floor. Why thank you, Asterix. I wonder what happens if you run out of spaces while in combat. That monster seems to be a joke monster. Three choices. Let's take the middle door. I don't trust Asterix. So that was the correct choice. One to three and traitor letters probably. Behind the door is another monster so it isn't worth it. It's not like I get some extra gold or experience after defeating monsters. In fact, it's a net negative as I lose spaces. And I need these spaces in order to pull off attacks. 1, 2, 3, XYZ. Is there a way to acquire more spaces other than taking them from signs? You again. I wish I knew the monsters' names. Six intruder numbers. That seems like a boss monster, so I won't go there just yet. You again. So that's the password. So they can attack back. I thought they were completely defenseless. Mini boss time. It's a ghost. That wasn't too bad at all. Just a dead end. I swear one of these walls is going to end up being a secret door.
Actual boss time. On to the next floor. Just like how it works in many other dungeons and many other dungeon crawlers, they are almost always bigger on the inside. Rarely it's the reverse. Perhaps I'm playing as the main character. Key to what though? I'm thinking this is an optional challenge for our optional treasure. So many chicken bones. I'm out of spaces now, cutting it a bit close. Oh goody, we need to type in dialects as well. Something happened when I ran out of spaces, but I didn't notice because I was paying more attention to typing. Kana then. And behind these series of doors is a heart giving fruit, aka a heart tank. So now I'm up to 62 spaces and 4 max held. So this optional challenge was well worth it. I wonder if there's an upgrade to increase the max number of spaces I can hold at once.
We have a magic keyboard. I guess that counts. Probably hiding a demon or something. That's one of the typical scenarios in these dungeon crawlers. Fully prepared for the boss. I'm sure I have 109 spaces and I'm at full health. Let's do this. I didn't expect that. Sure about that? I wish I could see the boss's health bar. Oh no. I'm gonna have to spell this all in one go too. I can't skip past it. And there's a time limit. That makes this situation even worse. I'm gonna wait for him to do... Let me just type this. No, I can't do that. I'll wait for him to start sucking it up, then I'll try typing it again. I don't know how I did that. I would have preferred more time for that word. Honestly, I expected this boss to attack more often.
a fitting way to end off this demo, but it was certainly a difficulty spike, especially with that last word and how little time you have to type it in correctly. Now, for my suggestions and comments about this game, I like the base idea and the concepts here, but my first suggestion would be to have another font type, as with the default font, trying to distinguish between O and A can be a bit of a problem. This tripped me up when typing in that long word. Secondly, I'd ease up the overall difficulty during this first part of the game. I didn't expect to have to type in punctuation other than periods and commas. I would have expected that to be introduced during the second or third part of the tower. Same with the dialects, dialogue, and omnipatria. And outside the combat, the dungeon exploration is rather simple. The only quote-unquote puzzles here were figuring out the passwords. But even then, they were very straightforward. For most of them, you just needed to find the NPCs or monster. And for the last one, you just need to remember the main character's name. I like if there are some more elements that you have to keep track of throughout the game. For instance, gold, equipment, and perhaps a mana bar. Another thing I'd like to see in the final game is more monsters with unique mechanics. We saw that with the plant boss and its ability to suck in words if you don't type them in fast enough. I'd like to see them added to regular enemies. I will say that this game's enemy variety is on the wackier side. We have the more regular skeleton warriors and ghosts directly alongside flying drumsticks. Even the dialogue and the signs are on the wackier side. Oh yeah, and can't forget, all the monsters should have name tags as well, so I know what to actually call them. On a related note, will rescuing the NPCs confer some benefits in the final game? Nevertheless, I wish the best of luck to the developers of this game. They have a long way to go before this game's complete. After all, this is a very early alpha demo. I'll be leaving links to this demo in the description below. Well then, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Toodles!